small community and we know everybody. I would say 90% of the people watching the program today know your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people understand that when we're delivering bad news here live, it's affecting us too. Mm -hmm. So it controls the tone of the program. and. Um, we're trying to stay positive, trying to stay funny, trying to stay focused. And, and can we just say that bringing Mr. LJ on board has changed the attitude about the program? It's changed a lot. He's crazy. Mm -hmm. He's just crazy, and it's we love him. A lot. We absolutely love him. Mm -hmm. You're wearing his shirt yes. in honor of him. How do you like them apples? <laughs> How do you, you like, like them, them apples? apples? <laughs> we love this sweet, soulful, old man attitude mm -hmm. of this young guy. Yeah, he's young. And and we just laugh at him and he makes us all feel better. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful for that addition. And, and when I brought him on, I kind of, I told him, I tell him all the time, I said, I feel like I'm using you because he does change the tone of things. Yeah. And he, everybody knows him. And, and loves him, and, and you can't go anywhere that people don't speak to him, talk to him, remind him of something, da 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 da. That's what it's about. And that's like bringing you on today. I know that it's so funny, you don't know this, but many, 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 many years ago, in a 1969 Camaro, I was dating a guy here from Ella Jane, his last name was Parks. Oh. And it was Lovely. very, very funny because <laughs> when I met you, I thought, oh, I wonder if he's related to him. So I, don't, I found out that you're not. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was about to say. <laughs> no, I found out that you weren't. But it was so funny because, you know, you hear this familiar name mm -hmm. and you just think, oh, I wonder if, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but Ella J is still a small town, but a booming, vibrant, growing mm -hmm amazing town it is. and one of the things that we're going to share today is Dwight Sanford has taught me that you don't go to the roundabout if you want to find out about Ella J. You yeah. go on the back roads. Yep. You grew up here on the back roads. Yes I did. I've been here for all 22 years of my life. And so. your family, your family is this blows my mind. Your grandfather has been preaching since, since he, he was 12. 12 years old. Yep. 12 mm -hmm. years old and he is now 80 80 80, mm -hmm. 80 years old yep. so you think about how many funerals how many revivals how many amazing people he has reached and yep. touched a lot now what's it like to be the grandson of a, a man who is he has probably changed so many people's lives in Gilmer County he has it's a uh, really a blessing to have you know the grandparents that I do have and to grow up in a uh, Christian household mm -hmm. um, just just it's really inspiring to see all the lives that he's touched mm -hmm. and the people like when it, you can't go like I go on camping trips with them sometimes and there will be people that he knows mm -hmm. when we go to other places doesn't and matter where you are. yeah it doesn't matter yeah. he's he's one of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet um, and it's just he's just one of those like people that you can talk to about anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you want to tell folks what his name is? Wallace Parks. And what's your granny's name? Uh, Carol Parks. And uh, might be loved by all who know them. Mm -hmm, yes, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. Now you wrote something in college that I think is interesting and we're going to come to that in a little bit. but. It, did they give you a choice, just choose one person to talk about, or why, you know, what was the deal? Um, I, well, when I was trying to think of, I think you could pick anybody that. Um, so you could have written about John Kennedy. Yeah, like living or dead. We you just had we anybody. just had to interview somebody. Oh, okay. And you couldn't interview John. Kennedy. No, obviously, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> um, no, but we uh, could interview anybody that we wanted to, and I decided to interview um, my grandpa obviously uh -huh. because uh -huh. he's done so much for in LJ for the past 60 years and so I wrote a five page essay for my final essay in college and I hope I passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he passed. I think I passed. I think yeah. he passed. Now we're going to show some clips of movies. Let, can we set the stage for that? Okay, so um, I have been making films on YouTube with my friends for the last seven, eight years. And, is that uh, how you got this job here? I wanted, I've been wanting to work here since I was a little kid. Uh -huh. 
-hmm. And I tried oh, that's to. That's so funny. Yeah. That is so funny since yeah. he was a little kid because yeah. we've been on since you were a little uh -huh, kid. Yeah. I've actually been on since you were a little yeah. kid. <laughs> yeah. And I used to, my grandparents would have you on the oh, TV. That's so and funny. and I would, it's come full circle. Come full <laughs> circle. Come full circle. Um, that is wild. But I've uh, done films, I've been on YouTube for like about 10, 10 or so, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I didn't start making films until I was 14 or so. And uh, these are just some clips of some of the films that we've done. Um, I believe we have the first one that we're going to show is uh, part of a film that we did called uh, Indiana Jones and the Lost Gem. Mm -hmm. And basically in this scene is where I turn on Indiana Jones, basically. And there's a whole chase scene that ensues after that. And so it's pretty, it's pretty neat. That's crazy. And mm -hmm. what did I tell you? We're sitting in the room. We're transferring things to use today. And we talk about Indiana Jones, and I said, do you remember the scene with the snakes? And all of a sudden, you can look on my arms, and I'm getting cold chills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there <laughs> so are no a, snakes. There's a scene in a movie where you never forget those uh -huh. scenes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah there yeah. sure is. Yeah, so let's show this clip. It's been fun, Dr. Jones, but I believe you have something that belongs to me. Thank you very much. So now what you possessed belongs to me. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs in a museum. And so do you. Where did I move? Wow. Well, that reminds me of when my <laughs> granny sent me to get a hickory. I was dumb enough to go and get it. You were dumb enough to well, not shoot yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and and then after that scene happens, uh, it it's I get away. You get away. I get away. Well, I'm so, so glad. You know, I'm so glad. I get Without away. many scars on you, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Now, to do this, what kind of time frame would it talk? This was only a 90 second clip we showed. Yeah. How long did it take you to set that up? And so how many times did you have to try on there? That film is about nine or 10 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took us a whole day to film the entire thing. Wow. And then we edited it. I think we edited it that day or the next day and we got it up like the next day mm -hmm. and that's kind of how we work is we just try to do it in a weekend but if we now since we're not in you know high school anymore uh, we don't we do all have all these jobs and stuff so we have to do it on every weekend mm -hmm. um, but it takes a lot uh, especially if I'm doing a French accent in that film, it takes <laughs> That's a lot. So funny. Uh, but we did actually, if you watch that video, we do uh, we did do a whole set piece in the front of uh, my friend Dawson's house, who plays Indiana Jones in that mm -hmm. clip. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it was it's really fun. It's a lot of fun to do, and uh, you just gotta learn as you go, really. Yeah. yeah and yeah. That's how it is. Okay, now the next one is Star Wars. I cannot imagine how you set this up. <laughs> I, I can't even, and I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I know the Star Wars phenomenon, mm -hmm. and people are crazy about oh, Star yeah. Wars, so yeah. obviously you chose that for a reason. So, yeah, my friend Dawson, uh, who he is a big fan of Star Wars, mm -hmm. and so as the, are billions of other oh, people. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we did this scene that is going to uh, be a uh, playing in a minute is. Uh, a lightsaber battle that took <laughs> three hours of sound effects editing all of that yeah wow. it was nuts wow. and uh, it took all day to edit the entire thing we actually filmed some of it not the scene that we're gonna play but right before that we filmed some of it three months prior wow. so it was like a lot of months in the making mm -hmm. uh, to do but it was a lot of hard work out in the cold and the uh, dark because you know you got to get those 
and shots. and that's the thing if people are wanting to be an extra on a movie mm -hmm. number one it pays 35 to 50 dollars mm -hmm. a day yeah you are there from daylight till often mm -hmm. midnight yep. so people don't understand the concept of a movie is is you are there yep. and you might have a 30 second walk on uh -huh. and, and you that, might have a 10 second walk and on. then that's it yeah that's yep. it and that's, that's it, it. Mm -hmm. it's crazy donovan yeah, says well. it's worse than that yeah. so. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, Freddie did. Um, um, what was it called? Scream Two. Oh yeah. And I pulled up some pictures of that one day, and it's like it was so weird. And I'm going to bring it and show it uh -huh. to y'all because you just think about it. It was in Savannah, Georgia. He had to wear a suit. It was hot as Hades, and you have to stand out there all day long mm -hmm. to do your walk on. Yeah. In this suit, sweating. Now the stars are in these trailers that are air conditioned. Mm -hmm. The extras, no, no, they're not. Not so much. <laughs> they're not. No. Nope. So, so film editing or film producing mm -hmm. is one of those things they say well why does it take so long to make this movie some of them are two and a half years to make mm -hmm. a movie two yep. and a half years it is yeah so and your clips are eight to nine minutes and it takes days yeah so it takes crazy. a while like that one like i said we filmed the first shots of that in december of like 2020 mm -hmm. and then we didn't get done with it till the beginning of 2021. wow yeah because we didn't find the time to film the rest of it mm -hmm. so so here we go star wars Okay, Trace just admitted that it took take after oh take gosh, after take yeah. after take. So, Dwight Sanford, don't feel so bad that it mm -mm. took 53 takes on one of your songs one day. Yeah. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. But we do, one of the greatest things I think of television or movie industry is the outtakes. Yeah. And the bloopers and the craziness because that's what makes it real. Mm -hmm. That is what makes yep. it real. You really don't get it the first time. Now, when I started doing Heart of the Home, my producer, Fred, looked at me and he said, well, if you mess up, you can retake. I've never, never done a retake <laughs> in television. Never done a retake in Heart of the Home. Never did a retake. We hit the mark and we did it. And he kept saying, I can't believe you can pull this off. I can't believe you can do that. I don't know how I do that, but I do it. And it's so weird to me mm -hmm. because when you look at the movies that are done and you know, I was thinking about um, on Golden Pond. Oh, you know, yeah. somebody died there right after the filming. I think Spencer Tracy died just days yeah. after the filming. If he had died in the three quarters of the way in that movie, the whole movie would have changed. Mm -hmm. Sidney Poitier and To Sir With Love, if somebody had killed Sidney Poitier before that was done, there are no more Sidney Poitiers. You can't find somebody to step in and replace him three mm -hmm. quarters of the way in the movie. Yeah. So. There are times that you realize, and there have been, I'm trying, I can't remember what actors, but there have been actors killed during the filming of a movie. Mm -hmm. And you can't retake that when they're gone. Nope. You can't, you can't go back and do it. You have to change the script. Mm -hmm. So it's so weird. It's now, like that with The Crow, <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Lee's son, the, he was the main actor and he died he on died. set. And they, it, it was crazy for that too, so. And that's what happens. That's mm -hmm. what happens in movie production. You might not see what the movie was really intended yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. So, now, tell me about who took Sarah. So this uh, film was an original film that I came up with, where my mom was actually cleaning out the attic or the closet in my room, and I was like, "This looks like somewhere somebody would get kidnapped in," and that's basically where it came from. And it was our first ever one hour film wow. that we ever did and it took us two days to shoot it 
and it took us about two or three weeks to edit the entire thing and it was it was wild uh, it's basically about this guy who disguises himself as an uber driver and he takes this girl and they got to find out who took the girl mm -hmm. and so it's it's pretty crazy and gets intense if you watch it and it was it was really fun though and make. now how do people find your things on YouTube uh, so I am on YouTube at Trey Sparks and you can also find our films at whether news happens or not on YouTube um, and that's where you can find all of mm -hmm. our stuff mm -hmm. and it's so interesting because we do YouTube here now. Mm -hmm. We do the program. You get to see it live here on ETC, and then it rears on ETC at 6 o'clock, and then it rears at 1 a.m. And if I have my way, it airs at 12, because that 1 a.m. is hard to stay up for. <laughs> but a lot of people tell me they do it. Yeah. But I love that once we finish here and we've done whatever we're going to do to it, we can slam it on YouTube, and it's there forever. Mm -hmm. And so we have people in Chicago, in California, in New York, in New Jersey watching us. And, and I said it's so funny because what do people in all those areas have in common with people in LJ, Georgia? They love life mm -hmm. and they laugh. And I get so many people who said, we tune in to hear you talk. And I said, what do you want to hear me talk about? They said, anything. You're just so Southern. And I said, well, I didn't used to be like this. I didn't used to sound like this. I used to run a switchboard at a Jewish law firm, and I sounded totally different. But y'all got to think about it. I've been up here 50 years. You can adjust in 50 years. Yeah. Now, if my mama came back from the dead, she'd go, what? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> what are you talking about? Because you pick up the accents where you are. Yeah. Now, I have some great friends from New York who've been here about five years. They're still sounding like New Yorkers. It takes you a while. But there's something about a warm Southern hospitality, Southern, Southern music, Southern sayings. There's something about the South that just says welcome here. You just here. gotta love the South. Yeah, you gotta love it. Mm -hmm. And and for anybody who is against gun rights, you're gonna hate me because today <laughs> on Facebook, I have a picture of Mr. J pointing a gun, mm. and he's pointing a gun to remind everybody that we need to get out and vote conservative in November, because we are voting for our rights as Christians, as Americans as gun toting, mm -hmm. gun slinging, gun shooting, gun bearing. Americans found it on the basis of the Bible, mm -hmm. of the Bible. And your family knows that more than anybody. Mm -hmm. They sure so, do. So, you know, when you look at my Facebook today, somebody's going to be offended. I'm sorry. I hate that for you. <laughs> and the reason the gun was, we were discussing this gun in the first place, I used to shoot a 20-gauge double barrel. Mm -hmm. And I said, will you please teach me to shoot other guns? Because I can shoot a 20-gauge. I won turkeys and hams at every ham shoot around 10 counties because I was great with that double barrel 20-gauge. But I'm not familiar with other guns. Mm -hmm. But in today's society, as a realtor, I think all women should be bearing arms. And when you get in Crystal Davis, my dear buddy from up in Murphy, North Carolina, when you get in her vehicle, she got a Bible and she's got a gun. And she says, right there, you have no doubt where she stands on anything. <laughs> so there's the Bible on her console and there's the gun. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. You never know. You never know. You never know. Happen. And we have the right to bear arms, and we better get to the polls, and we better keep our rights, and we better we better straighten America back and send it back to God because he's probably sitting up there scratching his head going, y'all are blowing it, y'all are blowing it. <laughs> so, Okay, you didn't blow it on who took Sarah. One hour, you wrote the script. Yeah. Y'all came up with this plan. Uh -huh. And where did you film it? Um, so we filmed most of it, pretty much all of it in L.J., um, and we filmed some of it at my house some of it at my grandparents' house, which is not in the clip, but mm -hmm. the clip that's in, it's at my house. And we filmed all of downtown LJ, uh, the coffee house in town, mm -hmm. and with just anywhere that we really could. Um, and like the interrogation scenes that we did for that were in like my garage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a lot. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. gotta work with what you have. Create a set. You yeah. just gotta work with <laughs> what you have. Mm -hmm. So here we go, who took Sarah? I'm just here to try to find Sarah. So but that's really all I got for you right now. If uh, I got anything else, I'll let you know or I'll swing by and talk to you. Thanks. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank, thank you for all you do. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Got cold chills on that one, too. That is so weird. You know, <clears throat> the magic of television, the magic of film, mm -hmm. the magic of your imagination. Yep. Um, I, you don't know this lady because she passed away a few years ago, but I was interviewing her. She had been doing television in New York and television in L.A., and she and her husband had been on some game shows and won a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And she was just really, really cool, and I really, I loved her. And she and I were in Murphy, North Carolina doing a show one day, and when we came off the air, I was in the middle of writing a book. And so I said, Heather, I want you to read this. And she said, oh, my gosh. She said, I want to do you in this movie. She said, we have to produce this movie. I want to do your life. And I said, it's going to be down and dirty. And she said, I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. She died two years later. Wow. And there was nobody, I couldn't think of anybody that I connected with the, day I, the way I did with Heather. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her to do this. And I really wanted to produce it because we wanted to teach women, you don't have to be abused, you don't have to be battered, you don't have to be talked down to. And it was about coming out of a hard time, a really, really hard time. And I wanted her to do it. Mm -hmm. And once she died, the passion in me to do that left. Mm -hmm. Because I could just, she looked like me younger, she acted like me, she, she could have done exactly what I wanted. How hard is it to find that perfect, how many scripts are sent out to people who read it and then the, you go, they really don't fit the bill, you know? Yeah, you, and it's, it's wild too because when, you know, obviously us, we don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of money and you can't work with a lot of stuff, so you have to like work with what you have and so that's why like a lot of our films, you got like me and then uh, Dawson and then uh, his girlfriend mm -hmm. in a lot of the films and like sometimes I even get, get my, uh, <laughs> my mom in there sometimes mm -hmm. you know you gotta you gotta work we, we've tried to you know with social media now we've tried to get people that are fans of us to try to be mm -hmm. in our videos mm -hmm. and stuff and we try to ask around I've even talked to Donovan and Aaron in there about mm -hmm. doing uh, films with us and you know you just gotta find the right people mm -hmm. and if you know if it doesn't work it doesn't work and there are movies short clips and short movies winning telly awards yeah. mm -hmm. that were produced by kids like y'all mm -hmm. you know by kids that just had a vision had a passion had a love for videography or television whatever you know or mm -hmm. maybe just had an idea and put that idea to work yeah and then they become producers of movies mm -hmm. and it's like if you've watched Andy Griffith everybody knows what Ron Howard was he was Opie he was Opie. Mm -hmm. You know who he is now? He's Ron Howard. Mm -hmm. He's Ron Howard. <laughs> you know Howard. how many movies he's produced? A bunch. A, <laughs> a bunch. bunch. You know how many awards he's won? He was Opie. Yeah. yeah. So it, it starts somewhere, but it has to start with a passion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one thing. I, I hope I never lose that. When I walk in here every day, I'm passionate about being here. I'm passionate about what we're going to talk about. It matters to me, it worries me that we have that beautiful, amazing piano sitting over there and we don't have somebody daily playing that piano. We have Donovan sitting in there who could do that yeah. every day. We're missing the mark on some mm -hmm. things because we have the availability with the set. Everybody likes it better that we have it over here and off that red wall. Everybody's so, and I get so many compliments. We love when you change it. I'm about to change this to fall colors. Yeah. And then we'll change to Christmas. but. You know, you decide what works for you. You hear from your audience, and, and I still get so tickled because when I, you know, only six months ago, I started playing the music of Ella J. Mm -hmm. Because I truly had never heard the song Welcome to Ella J. Yeah. It was written in 1992, but to my credit, it wasn't produced till 2015. Yeah. So that's only seven years that I didn't hear it, only seven <laughs> years. But I didn't know that song. Now, because of this, the craziness and how we met and what we've done and just become friends immediately, it was just weird how all of a sudden I'm looking differently at Ella J and I'm looking at kids like you mm -hmm. that are out here in the streets producing things that are all over the world today. Mm -hmm. They're all over the world they today. They are, yeah. And you did it in your hometown. Yeah, like with Bigfoot, <coughs> we had um, that Bigfoot, Bigfoot, the now Bigfoot film. This, my crew yeah. all believes in Bigfoot. <laughs> So they're trying to convince me that there really is a Bigfoot. Not a big jerk, but a Bigfoot. It got, <laughs> that one got 25,000 views on YouTube. That is YouTube. so cool. Yeah. And we were stunned at how many people okay, liked it. Okay, how did you determine what to do about Bigfoot? So it took us a whole day. Do you believe in Bigfoot, obviously? Maybe? I'm not sure. 
Okay. to be honest. Donovan does. He says there yes. is multiples. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, it took us a day to plan it out. And then, because um, at first, probably get a kick out of this, but at first it was going to be Bigfoot versus the Wolverine, the Marvel part. Yeah. And yeah. then it turned into, oh, well, we found this tape and this girl got taken by what we think is Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. But then you come to find it is Bigfoot and it's intense. So, wow. yeah, wow. it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. called The Woods. Uh -huh. If you want to check it out. Yeah, yeah. And again, tell people how to find you. Uh, it is at uh, Weather News Happens or Not on YouTube. And uh, you can find my stuff that I do on my channel at Trace Parks on Trace. YouTube. Yep. yep. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. And we do have a new commercial here. And it does feature some local LJ land and some landmarks. And that's what we're going to talk about when we come back. Because the back roads. If you haven't seen Ella J on the back roads, you don't know squat <laughs> about Ella J. You got to get out on the back roads, and we'll do that in just a few minutes. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Yay, we're back. Okay, we're going to share some photos with y'all. You're going to see the down and the dirty of the back road. You mm. might he see a little gravel. You might see a little creek. You might see a few trees. You might see Tim, our executive editor, out in the field with his new drone. Mm -hmm. And he is doing some amazing footage out there with that. You might see a painting that my mama did years and years ago, and she said it reminded her of her great, uh, my great grandmother, Granny wow. Gilreath. Now this is cool. How many of y'all have forded the creek? If I said today, I want y'all to get in your car and I want you to run through Gilmer County and find somewhere to ford the creek, how many of you would know where to ford the creek? Well, there we go, <laughs> fording the creek in the 1950 GMC better known as Mr. Jim, and Mr. Jim does a good, good job getting you here, getting you there, and never fails. So 
there's just something about getting out <clears throat> and viewing this, this, y'all. Uh, Tim is playing with the drone, and I'm playing with my phone, and I'm filming Tim. So that is a beautiful, beautiful spot, and I can say a 19 and a half wow. inch trout came out of that stream. Wow. So absolutely beautiful, and it is 10 minutes from the Dairy Queen, <clears throat> and it can be yours for a price one day. Not yet, not yet, but it can be. Nice you know, we are looking at Gilmer County the way you should get to know Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. And oh, no. this <laughs> is with the drone. Tim was playing and we had no idea he was doing oh, this. No. I wanted to learn to shoot that gun. <laughs> And so I said, you got to show me how to shoot this gun. And so, ding dong, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> I didn't do anything. And, and there we are playing with the drone again. And it just, this is, oh, this wow. is a drone shot. Is that not that is, absolutely that fantastic? Really There's nothing any prettier than this area this week. Wow. It has just been fantastic. Everything about it has been beautiful. And in the, now my mama painted that. And she said it reminds her of what she saw as a child with her grandmother who would have to wash for seven boys. She had seven sons and she did their laundry in a wash pot and hung it out on the line. Wow. So I can't even imagine that. And this is, we That's were great. off the property. There was a fence up there. And so we thank goodness for cameras with long lenses. Yeah. You can get some great photos. This is here in Gilmer County. Mm. What a beautiful, beautiful that old photo. I mean, that's just a beautiful home. And it's still sitting there, and I hope that it is always preserved and always looks that wonderful. I just love it. It reminds me of the house that my grandparents lived in in Dawson County. <clears throat> and that's the first time I ever went to a funeral where they brought the body home. They brought my oh, gr wow. great-grandmother home. And I was a kid, a little bitty girl, and I was terrified. I was sitting up with the dead and waiting on the tater salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those are colias. And thank you, Mr. Sanford, for planting those. You did a great, great job because they're growing like crazy. I, I give him a to-do list, and he's great at accomplishing 99.9% .9 of it. So that's pretty cool. We make a pretty good team. We work well together, and that's what matters. You know, you get things done. Mm -hmm. We do have fun, and we get things done. Now, there's Ansley and Tori. As they were doing baking about 12, 34, 14 years ago. So that's crazy. That's just crazy. Time flies. And that's when we were doing a parade, and uh, I, I found that, and I just, I had to say, gosh, how I miss that Charles Higgins. He was such a wonderful, wonderful man, and he and Charlene, always friends to us for many, many years, and, and I love him. And, and that was probably about my fourth Suburban. I'm, I might be a Suburban maniac, but anyway. Just, and that, when you're doing the back roads, I've got to tell y'all, go up to Fannin County. This bridge is just off Aska Road near Dial, Georgia, <clears throat> and take your old cars and do your photos on that bridge. There's not a prettier place anywhere. I've got a video of that car coming across there, and right now that car is for sale in Blairsville. That's the original car that Freddie used to own, and um, it's for sale now. The, the gentleman who bought it, I think, has serious health issues, and so it's for sale, and it's heartbreaking because it's, it is a wonderful, wonderful car. And uh, it's a it's a cool that, one, yes. That, that is picture. that scene should be in a movie. And again, <laughs> this is the same creek where the 19 and a half inch trout came from, and it is literally 10 minutes from the Dairy Queen here in LJ. So um, if I told you, I'd be in trouble because it's a secret. <laughs> but anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of property. And again, Tim and I went out there, and, and, and Tim kept saying, I could live here, I could live here. He said, I could die here. He said, I love this place. I absolutely love this place. It is just that place of peace that everybody comes to the mountains and everybody's looking for something. And that, my there sweet Angela took that picture. I had won 24 Telly Awards in two years. And she said, Mama, you never think about this. You never get recognition for this. And I said, it was pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm very thankful to have been in television just a couple of years and won a lot of awards. So it's been now a lot of years, yeah, a, lot a lot of years, years, a lot of years. But that's, that's what it's about. It is about making your mark. It's about enjoying what you're doing. And it's about making a difference in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about somebody who made a big difference in your life, your grandfather and your grandmother. And, and when you think about where would you be today if you didn't have that Christian foundation, if you didn't have that amazing 
people to look to. And this, we used to ride around everywhere, and we loved when y'all would come by and you'd want us to blow the horn or you'd stop and knock on the door and say, hey, is she in there? And yeah, of course I am. I was in there cooking. I could cook up a big meal in a motor home. I guarantee you I could cook up a big meal. But we've always enjoyed getting out and meeting y'all and spending time with you. And, and that's what I was missing. Now this was done up at Georgia Mountain Fair. This is Billy Joe Royal who wrote the song or recorded the song down in the boondocks. Absolutely one of my anthems when I was a teenager. I interviewed him and sadly that interview is, was in this building and it was one of six that were lost when a, a tape got caught in one of our machines and I never got to air that. But what, what an amazing gentleman he was and he died very shortly after that. Made me very sad. And uh, this, one of my favorite Heart of the Homes. I, I'm so thankful that we're back to doing Heart of the Homes. This was in my cabin up in Mineral Bluff. So much fun there. It was a tiny, tiny kitchen, but it worked well to do television. And I have said, I can create a cooking show just almost anywhere because I can make it happen. This week, we're gonna make it happen again. And we're gonna do it outside if the weather cooperates. So we hope that it will. And uh, that's what it's about. It's about having fun and, and doing what you're doing. And you have to na now be an encouragement to somebody else mm -hmm. because somebody was an encouragement to you. Do you wanna yep. read a little bit of your essay? Yes, so this is, like I said, this is an essay that I wrote uh, in college uh, for my final essay about my grandfather. So this is a little bit from it. Uh, there are many preachers in the North Georgia area but Wallace Parks is one of the most well-known. If you've attended a Baptist church in North Georgia, it's possible you have heard him preach. He is often described as a tall, distinguished man with hair like Elvis. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wallace was the third of nine children that his parents, Amy and Henry Parks, had. He was born on November 12, 1941, in the Mount Pisgah area located in LJ, Georgia. Wallace became a born-again Christian at the age of 12 and was baptized into Mount Pisgah Baptist Church and then called to preach there within the same year. He became licensed to preach a short time later at the age of 13. Uh, Wallace was then ordained by his home church, which led to him becoming an elected pastor of Mount Pisgah Baptist Church when he was 18. He says, I am most proud of becoming a born-again Christian and preacher at the age of 12, mentioned Wallace when speaking of his most memorable moments as a child. Throughout his 66 years of preaching, well, probably 68 now because this is like <laughs> several years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Wallace accomplished many feats. Wallace pastored over 14 churches, married more than 65 couples, and baptized so many people that he lost count. Mm. He also helped ordain preachers, deacons, in numerous uh, churches to become a part of the church. Wallace preached in many revivals, witnessing many who were saved and accepted Christ as their Savior. Being honest, working hard, and treating people right, he says, are values that were instilled in him from his parents. Wallace's father worked in the Whitestone Mines, and his mother was a homemaker. His mother, along with Wallace and his eight siblings, were responsible for taking care of the farm. The farm consisted of several types of livestock, which included cows, chickens, horses, and hogs. Each morning on the farm would begin early, as there were many chores to be done. There were eggs to be gathered and cows to be milked for their morning breakfast each day. They planted a yearly garden, which along with the livestock provided food for their family. After breakfast, all the children were off to the garden to harvest what was planted. They would then return with the vegetables gathered from the garden and help their mother to prepare them for their dinner. If the harvest was good that year, they would also help can the vegetables so they would have food stored up to last them through the winter, which you should know all about. I Cannon. should, absolutely. <laughs> uh, cutting wood was a necessity to heat the home they lived in. It was a year-round chore because it was their only source of heat for the home and cooking stove. When all the chores were completed, the siblings would spend time together playing. Wallace stated, one of my favorite things to do as a kid when my chores were done was play in the creek with my siblings. It might have been that one that... Uh, he yeah. played that y'all went to. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Wallace further shared that building their own truck wagons to ride down the steep hills near their house was another favorite pastime of his. During the winter months, he often enjoyed squirrel and rabbit hunting. This helped put food on the table. Uh, Wallace you attended, ever eaten squirrel or rabbit? I don't think so. Ooh. I don't think so. 
<laughs> but obviously, obviously they have. Yeah. Um, uh, Wallace attended school at Mount Pissy School. Unlike schools today, there were only one room in the schoolhouse with one teacher. He or she would teach all the subjects and all grades, uh, first through seventh. The entire student body consisted of 30 to 40 students. Wow. Imagine it now. Wow. wow. Uh, Wallace had a teacher named Joel Burnett. Miss Burnett would often play ball with the students during recess time. Uh, the school did not have a lunchroom. Each student would pack their own lunch to bring with them each day. Like most children, Wallace had to walk to school. Wow. Uh, he was fortunate that his house was close to the school, so he only had to walk a mile to attend school every day. A Imagine mile. that. A mile. Now think about that. I see, oh boy, here we go. Imagine that. I see these whining parents because the bus route now lets kids off at a strategic place, but uh -huh. I understand why there's nervousness about it. Today, when you drop your child off three mm -hmm. blocks from home, yeah. there are predators out there who will abduct your yep. children, who will <coughs> do horrible things to your mm -hmm. children, who you will never see your child again. This is such a different world. It Don't is. we want to go back to this? Yeah, Don't definitely. we want to go back mm -hmm. to that? We sure do. The old ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like most children, he had to walk to school. Wallace excelled and enjoyed school so much that he was able to finish two grades in just one year. Mm. He advanced from 6th to 8th grade. Uh, the first time ever riding in a school bus, he says, was the beginning of high school in the 8th grade in 1954. Wow. Uh, he was very fortunate due to his parents' efforts to be able to attend school and graduate from high school. Uh, while in high school, Wallace, having been a 12-year-old preacher, was frequently made fun of for preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. He never knew how to handle it, so he just took it. Mm. Uh, sometimes he would answer his bullies' questions with biblical answers and kill them with kindness. Wallace was the first person in his family to graduate from high school. During this time as a young boy, he dreamed of becoming an airline pilot or an artist. Uh, Wallace met his future wife, Carol Duvall, in church. They began dating in high school and went on many dates, including church dates, which were the most frequent, mm -hmm. uh, double dates with other couples, and drive-in dates to watch movies. Can we bring drive-ins back, too? Oh, my like, gosh, yes. Please? Yes, yes. Uh, in June of 1961, they were married at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Wallace and Carol had three children, Michael, Richie, and Barry. Carol was a stay-at-home mom while Wallace worked at the Georgia Department of Transportation, which I think he retired from there. Mm -hmm. um, he was a very well-known painter and did immaculate work for many people in the LJ area. To help make extra money, Wallace started painting in the evenings and on the weekends. Unfortunately... Working two jobs caused him to be away from home more than he liked and less available to pastor and spending time with his family. One of my biggest challenges I faced in my life was learning to manage myself, he stated. After working many weeks and years with two jobs, Wallace said he wishes he had done things different. Wallace said he would specifically spend more time in my church work and more time with my wife and children instead of working so much. When Wallace and his family did have free time, they like to spend their times outdoors. My number one favorite hobby in the world is going camping, Wallace stated. In their earlier years, when they had the opportunity, they would take the children tent camping to local places such as Skeena Gap Campground, Lake Lanier, and Tacoa River. Wallace got to spend more time with his family, which helped them grow closer to one another. As the years passed, Wallace and Carol upgraded to a travel trailer now that they have more time on their hands, they can go on longer trips to places such as Rivers Landing in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for a week at a time, which they are right now at Pigeon Forge. <laughs> if y'all are watching, they are, yeah. Uh, although Wallace is blessed to have experienced many things in his life, he's witnessed many changes in the last 40 years that he feels has not been for the better. The biggest changes I have seen in the last 60 years are a lack of morals in society mm -hmm. due to the lack of families spending time together most families do not sit down together to eat dinner even once a week, he stated. In my day, we had one-on-one -on -one conversations unlike today. People will text each other in the same room. Technology has definitely not brought our society together. It has pushed it further apart. Uh, these types of interactions helped shape Wallace, and he taught his children the same values. Wallace's life has been nothing but special in many people's eyes. He's lived through the Cold War, the Vietnam War, and the ongoing war in Afghanistan. But when asked what he wanted to be remembered for, he said, I would like to be remembered for being an upstanding Christian and family man. Family is a very important aspect of Wallace's life. It was the word that he used to describe himself the most. Wow. He said, because my family, children, 
daughters-in-laws and grandchildren outside of God, they are my life. I feel my life has been richly blessed. God provided me with a precious wife, three loving sons that I adore, two precious daughter and daughters-in-laws that I love to death, and two grandsons that are unspeakable treasures, along with two granddaughters that are unspeakable treasures. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Papa. Um, also just recently <laughs> added a granddaughter-in-law that I love dearly. She's a blessing to us as well. I would have to say God has been good to me. Yeah, that is precious. Now we're, we're going to time everything perfectly. So now we have some videos we want to share. Yes. So we're going to go to some videos. <clears throat> we'll be back shortly. <clears throat> the message on my phone I called in to talk to him to see what's going on they're laying off across the plant employees by the score I would say things can't get worse but I've been Yeah. 
Okay, I want to remind y'all, if you would like to purchase a Dwight Sanford CD or T-shirt, I'm going to actually be over at the cabin across from Ace Hardware all weekend long. I've got some things going on that I'm going to be doing there. I've got some uh, meetings I have to have, and I just decided I'll do it there. So if you want to stop by and pick up a CD or a T-shirt, I will be there. I'll be there the majority of Saturday, and then after church on Sunday, I'll be there Sunday from about 2 to about 5 or 6 and come by. I'd love to talk to you. love to visit with you. I probably will have some of Dawn's muscadine jelly and some of Dawn's salsa with me too because she is busy canning and doing and a cooking. I'm so proud of my kids. You know, we, we look around and we look at life and, and this is a world that has to be a tough place to grow mm -hmm. up in. There are families who don't have the Christian family foundation or support that you have. Mm -hmm. There are families, I meet kids who their parents were off doing drugs and left the kids alone. The kids ended up in trouble, but then the kids came out of it. So there is hope for America, but mm -hmm. let me tell you where we find the hope. We find the hope in um, turning our country back around to what it needs to be. We need to go back to those good, conservative, basic ways and quit giving America away today. I want to ask each and every one of you to pray for the state of Florida. My sister is there. Evelyn's sister is there. We have so many friends who own property in Clearwater, Tampa area. My buddy Ron Martin is down there taking care of his 85-year-old mom. He drove down to take care of her, and he said, Sure, you think it's a good idea? I said, Ron, I think it's a horrible idea, but go ahead and do it. They have now turned I-75 is only coming northbound. You cannot go into Florida on I-75. And thank you, Governor Kemp. I love, I just say I love Brian Kemp. Thank you for doing what you do <clears throat> to help each other, to, to maintain our conservative ways. Thank you to everybody who is running on a platform of bringing America back to what you grew up with. Yes. We believe in our firm foundation of faith. We believe in our firm foundation of carrying guns. And this, this is Heart of the Home started by sitting around a table. And I said, when you, when you come to visit Heart of the Home, it's food, it's family, it's fellowship, and that's what your, your family should sit down together. I'm, I'm a stickler about it, and it didn't happen at my house for many years because <clears throat> other people aren't raised the way you were, but Mama always had us gather around the table, and we sat at the table, we discussed the day, we talked about what was going on with ourselves. That's your time to spend time with family and start that meal in prayer and, or end it in prayer. Pray for your neighbors, pray for your friends, but today, y'all, please pray for the state of Florida. My sister is already battling this cancer mess, and now they've got a Category 5 hurricane about to blast them. So please, everybody pray for the state of Florida. Pray that all the, there are so many elderly people who live down there alone, whose children weren't able to get to them like Ron was, and Ron Martin, I love you. You're a good guy. He's just a good guy. I mean, he drove down there all night long to take care it's of his 85-year-old mama. Commitment. He lives at Kusawati. I'm, I'm selling his house, and he <laughs> says, I won't be here for a few days. I'm going to take care of my mama. And I'm like, what kind of guy does that? He's just a good guy. So, so Ron, love you, and, and, and thank you for everything, everything that y'all do for me because what you do for me is you tune in every day. You send me precious messages. You tell me thank you for what we're talking about. And today, I think today's topic was very important. Today's topic was about a man who committed his life to Christ. Yep. But at the same time, he brought so many other people to Christ. Yep, so, sure yeah, it was amazing. Thank you for being here today. Well, and Aaron will be our next behind-the-scenes guest. But that will be next week because he has school to do tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow is... Mr. LJ show, yeah. and she was just going to sit here, and I'm going to let him take it away now, if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be exciting. So y'all do something fun today. Please get out on the back roads. Find yourself a back road. Find you a place to ford the creek. Find you somebody to spend some time with that, that makes a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. Take them to lunch. Pick up the phone and call an elderly, na elderly neighbor and say, hey, I hadn't seen you in a while. I want to spend a little time with you. We're going to leave you now as rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. I hope that you will make a new friend today. Maybe if you're standing at the grocery store and you look around and you don't know that person, say, hey, I'm so-and-so. Welcome to Ella J. Welcome to Ella J. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Thank you, Sunshine. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you.